Hey guys, DJ Ravine here and I'm here in Amsterdam at ADE 2018 and we're in the Hotel Amstelzisch and we have a special guest here today, Froddle. Hello, hello. He is a fellow Aussie, he is the boy from down under. What are you doing, yes, man? What's up? It's good to be back in ADE, of course. Yeah. Third beautiful. year running. Um, yeah, busy times, of course. Nice. Well, what, what, are you, know. what are you going to be showing us today? I'm going to be running us through my new single, Wanderlust, which came out recently on Spinner Records. Um, it's probably the most emotional thing I've done, I would say. It has, I mean, it's still funky and it still has the good vibes. Still dirty disco? Still dirty disco, I guess, but like it has a really, like a one minute emotional outro and yeah. Cool, let's, uh, yeah. let's listen to this musical journey. Let's dive in. So yeah, the track started uh, in my hotel room in Ibiza. Mm -hmm. It, it came place. together in a couple of days. And it's all based around this vocal that I sung into my iPhone. Nice. The vocal sounds like this by itself. Loving you is easy. Loving you is all I want. So it started, I'll show you how it started. It's just me singing into my iPhone. And the original vocal sounds like this. Loving you is Easy, loving you is all I want. Loving you is very MJ. Very MJ, especially yeah. <laughs> um, So, oh my god. So yeah, that's that's how the vocal started. And like I said, it's just me singing into my iPhone. I just edge up just on my computer and then then put it in. And then I just pitched it up using Ableton's native setting, native mm -hmm. pitch, whatever you call it. Um, so it sounds like this. Loving you is. Love it, love it, love it. I mean, that sounds more like me when I keep the format, but mm -hmm. I wanted that chipmunk vibe, kind of, It's kind of like master tempo. Is. Yeah, exactly. So, pitched up without any processing, it sounds like this. Easy. And then with all the processing. Easy. And the main thing is just this pedal, which is... Do you mean like a really old school sound? That guitar distortion. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, and then all I've done is duplicated this and run it through a vocoder, which sounds like this together. And the vocoder is just at 100% here, yep. routed through the serum chords, which is basically like initial patch. So... Yeah, then once again, it sounds like this. Yeah, so and those uh, those serum chords don't actually play in the song, but they not not those exact ones. No, so the, what I've done is these are the chords like MIDI wise that play throughout the whole track, um, and I've just loaded up a separate channel, opened the chords right up, just so it's playing like like long legato chords too because in the chord, in the track the chords are quite short but mm. um, for the sake of the vocoder because you don't want the vocal because literally like the vocal is when it goes through the vocoder it's using the audio from these chords yeah so whilst they're choppy in the actual song if they're really staccato in this the vocal will just chop in and out right yeah yeah makes sense so i have the chords stretched out and long and then yeah the way the vocoder works is it just uses the sound of these chords to play the vocal cool Cool. Yeah. So, what did you uh, get up to next after this? So, once I literally, like, I had no chords at the start. I just sung that vocal in, and then, but once I had this vocal, um, I wrote these chords around it. And they are very basic again. Um, just serum chords. Initial patch. Yeah, it's just the initial patch that I made. I mean, it's the sound that I made from scratch. So, quite basic, it's just three voices with a bit of detune. Um, and the main thing going on here is just the phaser. Yeah. Without the phaser. Mm. 
the phaser gives it that kind of retro y kind yeah, of does. sound and like yeah. gives it a lot of movement as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, big difference. Yeah, that's like the main thing going here is the phaser and then um, reverb and EQ, but it's, it's all pretty simple stuff. The flanger is doing a decent amount too. This is without the flanger. And what it does, it gives like, it, as, as well as width, it gives a lot of body to the sound. Yeah. Like it, it spreads it out and it adds like, between like 100 and 500, it adds this like weird like, moving thing. Like mm. if you put it at 100%, you can really feel it. It almost adds another layer that's like distorting mm. and moving. Mm. Mm. You've got two instances of a hollow room. Often like, I'll get the original idea down as quickly as I can with the sounds that feel right and then I kind of go through each channel and feel, all right, this one needs a bit more reverb. And usually I won't. I mean, I should have just gone into the original one and dialed it in, but I'll kind of just go through and add stuff at the end that, that needs to be there. Like I've got, <laughs> I've added one, two, three, four, four EQs wow. and I could have done that easily on one, yeah. but I, it's kind of like, I'll go through and be like, oh, actually it needs a little bit less of this and I kind of just leave that there. Yeah, because also it makes sense because after you're done with that one, it, it's kind of difficult to kind of imagine that there as yeah. well. And Yeah, I'm quite a visual guy, so I like mm. seeing all the points individually. Mm. It's like, if I dial that in there, I wouldn't think of that as a boost mm. with mm. a cut with another cut and a boost. It's, it's just easy for me to see. Yeah, what you've done each yeah, set. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I had the chords and then then after the chords came the drop melody. So I was literally just looping. Looping that and then just listening to the track without, without the, the vocal at all and just thinking where I wanted to go. And which was when I played in this melody here. So creatively, the process was kind of like. And then I guess I went and built the drop and, and built everything else from there. Okay, what's that uh, serum? That is serum, yeah. This one's just a preset. Use a lot of serum? Yeah, recently I've been. I've been diving back into silent, like serum and silent a lot. Um, I mean, a lot of the sounds I just build from scratch to shape it into the track. Like mm. I have an idea of how I want it to sound and just build it from there. If I don't know exactly what I want it to sound like, I'll just scroll through presets and then build a sound around that. But yeah. yeah, lately I've just been making everything from scratch. Nice. When I first heard this track, I was like, I can hear that sound, man. I can yeah. hear throttle sound in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, doing going through it chronologically, I guess the next point is the this little thing I've got going on in the break here. Which is very like, again, retro kind of Maddie and Porter vibes, I mm. guess. Diva. Diva, yeah, Diva's like really good for the old vintage stuff. I don't think I've ever used that one before. Yeah, it's great, it looks like an old. Oh wow, it's that looks cool. amazing. Yeah, it's crazy, right? It's a little bit, a little bit cold and responsive. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of my stuff is, is quite cold and responsive. So do you have any tricks when it comes to doing your build-ups and stuff like that? Is there something that you kind of go to? The main thing I use is filtering and reverb, aside from the obvious like build-up effects and mm. rises and stuff. It's mainly just filtering, so mm. if, we, if we start... Because I did, I did notice this one was going out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it really disappears and it's, it's mainly reverb and filtering. Um, mm. So if we listen to this guy... You can see this is just straight away fading it out. Um, I've also got an EQ that's coming in only for the build-up, so when the lead comes in and the lead sits right in the spot here, um, I've just scooped that out just to give the lead space as it's building up. So this guy just fades out and then comes back in when it's building up. Mm. Um, and somewhere here there'll be a reverb, I think this one is. 
or so something automating to make it fade away. Mm. Um, and then if we solo the lead here. This is just an absolute ton of reverb on there. Yeah, you can hear it coming in, that Yeah, reverb. and then the bass is um, filtered down low, and then this will just sweep up towards the end of the drop. Hard hearing headphones, but like on a big system, really, you really notice the sub just disappear. So let's take a look at that that bass because I just noticed you got it. Is that that's a that's a bass as well? Is you've got uh, two basses later? Yes. Yeah, so I have a live, funky sounding bass here. Mm. And I've just duplicated that with a sub, which is hard here, but. So, Anything you use in particular for the bass? Or? Um, I think I just built something from scratch. It's just a silence bass. Okay, cool. It's just like a basic saw wave. Mm. Um, the main thing here is just the saturation. Mm. I mean, Huge you difference. You can't even really, if I... It just gives it like... I don't know. It's just, it's something around like the two to four hundred, I guess. Mm. When when I have a bass like this, oh, I, I love I love saturated. Yeah, though. like it gives it really adds a lot of sound to it. Like yeah. you get a lot of uh, frequencies that you don't really get, and it pushes them. Yeah, it's kind of like the flanger in the sense that it just adds a randomness that you can't really get with EQ mm. or mm. anything else. So mm. yeah, it's a very like I the, I wanted the bass to feel a little bit live, so it's it's like I've added the MIDI to to make it feel a bit live, and I've added a, a pitch bend towards the end here too. Don't you sometimes even play in your own like I do, guitars yeah. And yeah, stuff yeah like a that? lot of the time. This one I didn't have a guitar on me, it was oh, you're <laughs> just in my, in my hotel room. Yeah, so. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll do my best to make things sound as live as possible, so. Mm. It's just subtle stuff like the pitch bend here and the, the going up an octave here is like the stuff that a real bassist would do. Cool. And when, when it's all together, it makes, makes a big difference. Let's take a look at those, uh, those drums. Yeah, so this is just straight from my Snake Hips remix. Really nice clap. Nothing crazy going on here again. It's just, just a bit of EQ and reverb. Um, and then what I've done, I've layered that with a higher clap here. Which is really wide and it's mm. giving me some 200 as well as some high end grit. And then the kick. Which sounds awful by itself, like I said. Um, and it's there's, bumpy, man. Yeah, it is. There's two kicks here. So number one sounds like this. Really low, like thumpy one. Um, and I'm just filtering out everything above 600. And then transient shaper, just making it a little bit shorter, just because it was like it's super, super thuddy. So mm. it's just removing like. Oh yeah. Ooh. So transient shaper is great for like. Either giving it more punch. You know what you can use for that now? Drum bus. On Ableton? Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. I I just love the transient shaper for like how simple it is. Mm. It's like it's got attack and release and like that's the only thing. There's like three think. knobs. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, shortening and release just a little bit on this one. Um, and filtering out all the highs. And then on top of that, I've layered a little top kick, which is this guy. Removing anything. Yeah, it's like no low frequency yeah, at all. Yeah, um, cutting out, of course, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then together, they sound like this. And then I'm putting these go, oh my God. <laughs> it almost sounds like big a big room kick yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, it does, it does. Um, and then, what have I done? I have so many groups here. I'm so indecisive, so. I'll do something and then I'll like change it and then I'll group oh it. Oh my god, man! Look, I know Live Ten has groups within groups now, but it doesn't mean you have to use that many this groups within groups. There's like six groups within that group for two kicks, <laughs> and then I've laid the kick from uh, Waiting, my track with Oliver Helms. Uh, great track. A second top kick, and then oh, my, this is absurd. Um, I did some EQ on like the whole kick, but that that seems to have disappeared here. Let's see if I can find it. As you can see, I'm a, I'm a messy producer. <laughs> oh my god. And look, as long as you know where everything is. Exactly. Um, so anyway, the kick all together sounds like this. 
just like a little bit of subtle EQ. Like I said, I'm kind of doing it on the go here. Mm -hmm. um, and then laying this guy on top of the kick. Which makes it that sound- massively big room. It sounds awful, right? Oh my God. Um, no, I love big room. I'm just waiting for like the uh, animals lead to come I in. I know, there. right? But in the mix. <laughs> sounds great. You don't hear any of the distorting. Oh my God. It works. Wow. But the, the symbol's doing a lot here, like. I mean, especially live, just having something that's like in the background, like, mm. <sighs> makes a big difference. Mm. Um, and I'm just side chaining that to the kick to give it some space, like a really short side chain here. Mm -hmm. um, just dials it back and gives it space in the mix. Yeah, yeah. It's just like little things like that, doing that on everything, like, makes a huge difference when it comes to crunching it on the master. Oh, definitely. Like, without that, the kick just gets buried and the bass gets buried. So, what did people do before side chain? Sorry? What did people do before I, sidechain? I have no idea. That, I mean, people in, like people use it in other genres, but in dance, it's like the biggest thing. Oh, definitely. It's so important definitely. in dance. It makes house music. Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of the drums all together. I've got like little effects coming in and out, like this guy. It's like a crowd sample. And that's so basically. when you're, when you're done with your uh, of the track, you know, when you've kind of feel, okay, I'm done. Is that when you add all the effects in or? It's kind of as I'm going. I, um, I, try, I try to get everything down as quickly as possible when I'm making a track. Like I said, and then I'll kind of go in and add what needs to be, add, uh, needs to be added. But I kind of, when I'm on that initial burst of inspiration, I try, like, get the idea to where I think I hear it in my head. And that usually involves effects and stuff. Mm. Um, and I might come back and replace some effects later. But usually, like once I've got, once it's in the project, like it's, it's usually done because I, it's like that initial burst of inspiration and then anything else sounds wrong after that. So yeah, I mean, these effects went in immediately. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like maybe I'll put an uplifter in later or like an additional effect, but this is the core group of stuff was, was in straight away. Cool. Yeah, once I had the, once I had the vocal and the chords, um, like I said, I went straight to the lead and doing, before I made the drop, I guess I had this. Which is like the same groove as the the break. It's just more staccato and like mm. way more bouncy. So instead of like da da, it's like ba ba ba. Um, like just in itself, it feels more like a drop rather than a breakdown. Mm. Um, mm. So you add the bass to that, and then, like I said, I put the lead on top of that. Um, so the main sound is this is this serum preset. Which in itself already sounds pretty good. Mm. Um, I just wanted it to be more big room, I guess, for lack of a, bit, a better mm. word. Um, so I've laid this really disgusting, noisy sound on top um, from Icarus. It works, cool. man. Um, so together. Quite, quite. Lucky. It is. Mm. And then layering another noise sound on top. I mean, they're subtle, but they add like a lot in the mix. Like if you just yeah. like, just solo this guy. And then these others on top. Makes a big difference. Yeah, so. It gives it more a dancey feel. Yeah, it does. Like yeah. if you listen without them in the mix. Has no no punch to it, so yeah, I love it. But I've saw it. Exactly. And then but honestly, on the uh, on the lead itself, there's not too much like crazy processing or anything. It's really just like EQ and and reverb. I'm doing uh, actually this this thing's cool. It's, Parallel reverb, which is what I use on all my drop leads and, and vocals, actually. I have a reverb channel, and I'm duplicating that, so I have two channels. I have a reverb, 100% reverb, and 100% dry channel. And I'm side-chaining the reverb channel back to the original vocal. Mm. So basically what it is, like I'm drowning in reverb, but when the actual lead or vocal is playing, in this case the lead, there's no reverb. 
and then once as soon as the lead stops the reverb pops up and basically what it does in the mix it just fills fills the mix right up and it makes it, it just feel bigger i guess live but it right. just it just fills up all the space basically so as far as the lead's concerned it has almost the same amount of reverb but there's so much more space without it This really fills up those gaps, like without the compression and if I bump up the reverb. So this is channel one. So this is the totally wet one. Um, it basically gives you your dry signal and also your reverb yeah. signal you can play individually. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so that's if I really pump it up without the side chain and as soon as I put the side chain on. So it's just about finding like the right amount and and side chaining the right amount. That sounds like it'd help a lot in the mix. It does. It's it's more a mixing thing. Like it's mm. so subtle by itself. But let's see without it here. It's really subtle, but. And with it. It's like really really subtle, but if you do it. The, the lead kind of punches yeah, through a bit more? Exactly, because it, what it allows you to do, it allows you to turn the lead up and, it, sorry, it allows the lead to punch through more, so it, it appears louder, but it's still got like a lot of reverb, it's still yeah, really, really right. wet. Like it, it feels drier, the lead itself feels dry, but everything around it feels wet, which is what I want. Yeah, no, I totally understand. It kind of makes sort of reverbs not there when it doesn't need to be. Yeah, exactly. And it just, it saves the headache when mixing, like trying to like turn the chords down or turn mm, the drums down mm. to make the lead louder. Instead, like you can have everything have it its own space, but still have that the feeling that it's like really wet and, and big. Cool. So yeah, as far as the drop goes, that is basically it. There's hats that come in. Um, this little guy. But I mean, that's that's basically the drop. Um, yeah, I wanted this when I was making it. A, it was like the the rest of the track is quite funky, but also emotional. Um, and I really wanted the, the end of the song to just go full on emotional and have like really explore that because the, like the breaks are really groovy and the drop is a bit more emotional, mm. but I wanted to do a full emotional. So I've done this like one minute orchestral outro here. Wow. Um, which is awesome for my shows. It sounds a little something like this. It sounds like, a, sounds like it'd be great to finish on. Yeah, it is, it is. It's, it's the outro for my shows. Is that just a sample? Yeah. Thank you everybody for coming yeah. out tonight. <laughs> yeah, every I love time. you. <laughs> every every time. single one of you. <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great for the outro. So, See you next time. It's, so there's a lot going on there. It's this little like kind of eight bit version of the of the drop lead. So yeah, on top, on top of this lead, I built these crazy strings. And they're just contacts. Um, they're terrible for CPU, but they're great for session strings. On these, I'm just putting the RC20, which makes it feel like it gets rid of that harsh high end that you get when you use plug-in strings. Like without mm -hmm. it, it's like this. It just, I don't know, removes some of that harshness when, mm -hmm. when you use this distortion. Mm -hmm. 
and then this little guy is mm. adding like artificial pitch screw ups, which is cool. Yeah. Um, Bit of flavor. Yeah, and then just widening them with this. That's interesting, with the delay, you're just using uh, two instances, but on milliseconds instead yes, of the time. Yes, so... You have and 100% wet? You'll have to put both headphones on, but, um, to hear the difference, but this is without it. Oh. And what it's doing is just pushing it white, like it's super subtle in these headphones, but you, you really notice it live. Mm. Um, you notice it more, let me, to make it way obvious, if I put it in mono. Oh, so what it yeah, does, it's yeah, just, massively. it's using two instances of the same string, mm. putting one like, in this case, nine milliseconds later in one headphone. And it's it's basically replicating, like if you had, if you were recording strings with two microphones, mm, mm. one was here and one was here, you'd have a slightly different signal. Yeah, you pan right, one left yeah. and one right. In this yeah. case, the signal is identical, so you just, delay one and it makes you feel way wider. You can hear if you go like... Mm. You can hear it's way too delayed, but if, yeah. you just, if you pull it back to like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull to like 10 or like anywhere between 10 and 20 I usually use. Um, it's great for making things wide. You have any like actual musical training, like, uh, um, like formal music training? Not really. I learned guitar when I was younger, but never like, like never learned theory or anything. But you've like, like learning guitar, I mean, you learn how to like set up a microphone to record your guitar and stuff. Not like really, that. no. Really? No, oh. I kind of just, just learn it all oh. on the spot. Like, oh, and the strings too, I just kind of did what felt right, I guess. Cool. Like, I have cool. no idea why I did this particular media, it just felt, it felt right. Yeah, I've always felt like your melodies were like, they're a bit more advanced, like there's a bit more oh, something you. going on. I don't know, I guess I'm just easily bored, so if it's not like, <laughs> if it doesn't have anything that like, Keeps me excited when I'm making the track for, you know, weeks at a time. Well, it's, a, it's, it's definitely no one note big room here. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, so uh, any other cool little tricks? Lots. Um, let's see, before the first drop, there's a, well, before both drops, there's a cool little reverse reverb thing going on. Um, it. it makes a massive difference, like without it, it sounds like this. Way too static. Mm. Yeah, this is this little guy here. I, I love that trick. You know, that kind of reverse reverb yeah. bit. Like, it just helps bring in a new part yeah, really yeah. well. I mean, it's it's simple, but it's it's so effective. Like, it's, it's so quick to make. I'll just show you here. Basically, all I'm doing is taking a part of the vocal, um, adding a shitload of reverb, then reversing that, and it creates that sucking effect, so. I put the reverb, usually not at 100, because I, I still want some of that punch from the original single. Mm -hmm. I might put it like 85% or something. And then I freeze the track. Like this. Takes a bit of time because you have a lot of plugins. Yes, I do. OTT. Everyone OTT. Everyone OTT. Look at this, like, one, two, three ping pong delays. Three ping pong delays. Two <laughs> pedals. You don't need that. You don't need that at all. So, once I've had that frozen, I make a new audio track. Pull this little guy over like this. Then I'll consolidate these two together. And then reverse it in here. Starts to sound like this. And because I didn't put it at 100, you get this little, mm. this little like punchy thing here. I always always put it at 100, so that's a good tip. Yeah, it, it's nice for, I mean, you, there's different ways to do it. Like you can also reverse it, wet, like reverse it, then put the reverb on mm. and then flip it back. And it, they all give like slightly different effects, but just for this one, this is how I want to do it. And then I'll just shape it how I want it to shape, like using an envelope. Whether I want it really short or, or longer. Mm. And it really helps like keeping the energy up, especially in this one, like. Oh yeah, we copied, we dragged it, we didn't we, copy it. We, uh, <laughs> damn, we used the vocal, but yeah, yeah. It, it really helps. The atmosphere is a big one in this song, actually. Just from sample pack. Um, 
I picked my favourite part. It's quite a long one, but I picked my favourite part and I'm just duplicating and fading mm -hmm. between each one. It, it, like it, I'm using it a lot in my, my more recent tracks just to create emotion, like it really helps. And that's I guess basically it, like the second break is, is different but it's still using the same, like that is the same pluck from, mm. the same pluck from the first break. Um, but you've kind of just skipped the whole little pattern at the end. Yeah, exactly, the exactly. One. Yeah. Um, and this little guy, let's see. Yeah, so I originally had this idea to do like a guitar solo in the second break, mm. which didn't make it onto the actual track, but it's in this older project. So we can have a look at it. And I do this a lot, like I'll, rather than recording guitar, like I'll use an existing thing, an existing element in the song, which is usually a vocal or it might be a synth or something, and run it through guitar processing to make it sound like a solo. Mm. So I've literally pitched the vocal up, uh, up an octave. It sounds, again, awful by itself, but I'm just ramming it through, or is it guitar rig? Just a wah preset. Sorry, it moves it. It's kind of cool though. I kind of wish it was in the track, but anyway, yeah, um, yeah. That I guess that's Wonderlust. Sweet. So that was Wonderlust by Throttle. Let's uh, let's recap. Where can people get that track? Uh, everywhere. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, Beatport, Deezer. I think is that a, is that, is that a thing? Title is title. <laughs> Maybe yeah. on Beatport. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, Extended's on Beatport, the, the one with the outro is just on Spotify and Apple Music. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. And uh, where can they find out more about yourself? Um, but yeah, follow me on at Throttle on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, cool. SoundCloud, cool. YouTube, Deezer, Tidal, I guess, if I have an account there. <laughs> Listen to this track heaps of times, you know. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Anyways, thank you guys so much. Check out quicklakemusicschool.com if you wanna find out more about dance music production. And thank you to Throttle again for joining us thank here you. at Lovely ADE. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for coming along, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Like, subscribe, comment, etc. <laughs>